Welcome YouTubers to today's lesson. We're going to be looking at Train Kept a Rolling by Johnny Burnett. A really cool tune. Giving you a little bit of a different perspective today, uh, looking up at me slightly. I had a nice view on the guitar and just decided to tip the camera up, so I hope you don't mind. I'm not looking down on you. I probably wouldn't be physically or metaphorically if we met because I'm actually quite short. So, and definitely not metaphorically, definitely not at all. Uh, so anyhow, uh, one thing I do want to talk to you guys about with this track is the whole argument about Grady Martin, Paul Berlinson, who played on it. I'm going to say Grady Martin. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. But the reason I'm going to say Grady Martin is because uh, I did a whole transcription, note for note, start to finish, on Lonesome Train. That's a long time to spend listening to a guitar player. And when I listen to this track, I'm convinced it's the same guy. Same approach. He's not too worried about the chords throughout the song. He's just doing his single line thing. Exactly the same uh, as Lonesome Train. He works magically in between the vocal lines. He still fits everything with the chords, even though he's not necessarily playing off chord tones and stuff. It's almost like he thinks in um, yeah, like a, a blues scale kind of line or lines throughout. So, yeah, I, I'm going to go with Grady Martin. Uh, and also Paul Berlinson's story about getting the tone on that track with the loose guitar valve. I don't think that really checks out. Uh, if anyone knows more about that stuff and wants to comment, please do. Uh, but anyhow, I've indulged that conversation and, I, you know, hey, let me know what you think. Before I do jump into the lesson, though, you can actually give super thanks now, which is a really good feature YouTube have included. If you're not a member of the Patreon, if that's not for you, um, you can actually uh, just click on a button below the video that says super thanks and you can chuck a couple dollars uh, if you do enjoy this video. However, if you are a Patreon, of course, you get the tabs, you get the sound slice. It's all really valuable stuff. So check out my post on Reverend Horton Heat's finger-picking style. You'll see everything that Patreon members get. That's a free public post, so you can jump over and have a look. So guys, that's it. Let's get into the lesson. I will... Oh, oh, nearly forgot. Got to thank Paul Craythorne, Jamie, Jason Toller, Anthony Vantalon, and Sebastian Katina. I may have already thanked Sebastian Katina, but you, if I did, you get an extra thanks. Oh, and Death Ray Cat. Check him out. He sent me this t-shirt. I'm not going to say ooh again, I promise. Let's get on with the lesson. Here we go. Okay, if you really dig the guitar tone as well, check out the Nocturne Mystery Brain. I love that pedal. Okay, so we start this on fret 7, okay, doing a double stop. We come in on the end of beat 3. 1 and 2 and 3. <laughs> okay, that's the first three bars. And if I was to explain that, basically we're working off 7 and 7, 5 and 5, 3 and 3, and then we open 3, open. And the timing, 3, uh, so 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... And then bar 4, so there's obviously no gap there, but we're straight into bar 4, we play... 303202 oh, oh, from the second string. 303203 oh, oh, and then straight into this. Okay, so this double stop run is basically just, you know, pentatonic stuff, E minor pentatonic. And it goes straight into. So if I play bar 3 into bar 4, that's. Uh, one and two and three and four and okay, don't worry about bar five there with that I made a little mistake there but the point is flowing straight into that minor blue scale coming down and the other thing you want to keep in mind is you'll see me go from my first finger jumping to my third probably worth doing that because you've got the moment where it's open so Okay, so now let's talk about bar 5, or the end of bar 4. As you hit that note, you want to reach straight for the 6th string and the 1st string. Play it twice. 3 and 3. Okay, my best advice for this one is uh, getting the little rhythms in your head as catchy little little rhythms. If you can get those in your head, this song is not too challenging. 
And as far as the technique as picking those uh, octave notes, they're actually two octaves apart. This is an E and this is an E. And there's an E in the middle too, but we're not using that one. That'd be cool. I'm trying to do it now. Yeah, getting a little fancy there. Don't worry about that. We've come off bar four. We're in bar four. Pinch these two. So use your finger and the pick, obviously. Spread right across like that. Uh, you know, you might not use a pick. You might use a thumb pick playing this song. There'd be nothing wrong with that. There's nothing too demanding in a flat picking sense. A lot of it's downstrokes, I reckon. So... Yeah, just getting used to... And then keep in mind that whatever you play on the sixth string, you're playing on the first string, and that's how you get that um, that two octave separation, all those octave notes there. Okay, so that's bar five. Yeah, two of the threes, open, three, O. Oh. We came into that with the two O's initially. Three, three, O, oh, three, O. Oh. And that's the whole intro. So it's actually nothing super complex, that intro. Well... It's not super easy, but it's, you know, it's it's short. There's a fair bit that happens, but if you can cover those basic skills, you'll be in like Flynn. I'm not sure into what, into the song. So let's look at the guitar solo now. At the end, I'm going to explain why I haven't covered the verses for this. I'm going to give you some tips on what I'd be doing if I was going to learn this song. So check out what I have to say about that at the end, and um, I'll walk you through the guitar solo right now. So uh, I've got this on the transcription as bar six. I haven't, uh, haven't, you know, put in all the breaks for the singing, etc. I've just, this is obviously just a lesson, not the entire song. So on the transcription, it'll show from bar six. This is a little lead into the solo. One, two, and three, and four, and okay, da, 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 and then he comes into the actual solo. So um, it's just the, the open string, six and first. Now in terms of fretting it, I um, some people would use their thumb and their finger. Or you could use finger and a finger, like second and third. Whatever works for you. Totally fine. So we've got one, one and two and three and four. And solo starts. One, da, da. So get that rhythm. Ba, ba, ba. Then we go into the twelves. Da, 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 da. So it's twelfth fret there and twelfth fret there. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, 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 ba. So we do four twelves. And what we do here is this pattern where we do these four twelves. So we go four O's. 12, 12, 12, 12. Alright, so that's everything through bars 7, 8, and 9. I'll play that again. I'll, well, you know, I'll go from 6. 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 1. Then we get that little slide down. So I actually played bar 10 then, and the difference between the previous bars is we hit the 12, then we do three zeros, 12 again, three zeros, and then we get the, that little rundown, which I'll talk about in a moment. So again, if you can hear the rhythms of those, it's just playing those 12s and lifting your fingers and doing that catchy rhythm with the, you know, by picking the... Okay. So uh, not too... Not really that hard. It's just probably going to be a little difficult if you're not used to it, playing those notes like that, and also not making noise on the strings in between that. Even I find that a little bit tricky, if I'm honest. That's everything uh, up to bar 11. Obviously, just 12, three zeros, 12, three zeros uh, for bar 10. Oh, and the only other thing that I'll mention is sliding into those 12s. Yeah, that, that takes a little practice. Right? up my own rhythm now so let's focus on what happens when you get to that little uh, slide down in bar 11 now I've transcribed this on the tab sort of, sort of like that I've put fret numbers in as he slides down but just take that with a grain of salt you don't have to play what's tab you've just got to just slide down and keep hitting it with your thumb it's a little bit of fun it's nothing too specific so that's over the course of a bar. I would just try to finish out with the open before we get to bar 12, where it goes. 13. So that's 12 and 13. So you want to sort of go. See how I'm now, that's that's beat one of bar 13. Sorry, bar 12. I hit that open before I did that. So. Okay. Okay, so for 12 and 13, get this rhythm in your head. I'm not going to talk you through it note by note. I'm just going to play it 
and I want you to try to hear it in your head when you work on it. So, bar 12. It's just switching between the two threes and the two open strings, okay? Just work on that for a little bit, sing it to yourself. Um, yeah, that, that, that's my advice with, with uh, 12 and 13. Okay, 14 is a bit more specific. We're obviously straight in off bar 13. So here we go. Now, 3, 2, O, oh, 3, 2, O, oh, 3, 2, O. Oh, and that's into bar 15. We're just yeah playing the third frets, second frets, and opens, and hitting those two strings. So, 14, 3, 2, O, oh, 3, 2, O, oh, 3, 2, O. Oh. Now, bar 15, I've just hit those O's. It's like we're going to do it again. 3, 2... But don't pick, slide, slide it, then pick. Okay, so bar f bar 15 sounds like this. I'll, I'll go from 14. So that was the entirety of bar 15. So uh, slide, pick, open, and then three. They're just on crotchets now, so on crutches. Sounds like the, beat, the notes are on crutches. One, one, and two. Uh, sorry, one and two and three and four. That's what I meant by crotchets. It's three and uh, three and four. And uh, bar sixteen. Let me play it because it's quite rhythmic. So bar sixteen goes seventeen. All right. So no, again, nothing super complicated, but the rhythm's a bit strange here. So I'll go from fifteen. Oh, hang on. Okay, so I'm I'm really starting starting to use the two in there, which we didn't really see until the O three two. Um, so in bar fifteen, uh, sorry, in bar sixteen, it goes three O. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna separate the six and the first string. I'm just gonna say three or O because it's the same. So three O on the beat off the beat there, gap on the two again. Then we're on the upbeat of these fourth beat here. Like that. Let me count that for you. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. So you can see it was all on the three there on the and two and three, four. And then we're one, just like that. Okay. So that's bar 18. We've, we've hit those zeros there. So we've come off bar 17. I'll do that one more time. Here we go. Then this rhythm, and that was um, into bar 19. So the rhythm in bar 18, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and in bar 19. Okay, that's that's all there is to it. Like, again, I could break that down really slow, but I'm just using three and O, and it's that rhythm, which if you hear it in your head, it's so much better than me breaking it down for you. So in terms of the verses, guys, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go crazy learning them. If I was going to be playing this at a gig, I actually wouldn't stress out uh, about learning every single lick in the verses. What Grady Martin does in this one, controversial, I know, but uh, what he's actually doing is he's just playing around with that concept. What I would do is, is get comfortable with those by learning the intro and the solo, and over the verses, just try to play around in between the lyrics and see what fits. The other thing that he's using really nicely is the E minor blue scale. There's a three there as well if you want. Okay, so throw that in there as well. Um, and you know, the other thing is he comes up here sometimes. Well, you certainly could. So that's in the B and the A, and I'm playing just the six and the first string. Just things to play around with. Again, I wouldn't learn every single note of that the verses. I that's what I would be doing. I just you know I'd be getting educated by doing the intro and the solo, and then noodling around with those concepts. That's really what Grady Martin has done so well on on that record, is playing between the the vocals and and around those vocals with lead lines and letting the acoustic guitar take care of the rhythm and the bass take care of the rhythm changes or the the chord changes. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Um, 
yeah, thanks for watching. Of course, check out my Patreon. Check out Death Ray Cat. Check out everything. Just check it all out. And thanks for the people that are supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. Things are things have been a bit slow, but they're they're improving at the moment, and I'm really happy to see that. So, um, yeah, I'm going to keep working and just keep putting out content. Hope you guys are digging it. I will see you in the next one.